Yeah. Okay. Because it does it, build up over time. Is it, it are, is you, an are you speaking in absolutes or are you saying it could cause? I mean, they all the study we found, every single study that I found that hasn't been disproven later on, because a lot of the stuff the EPA used to set the, was it four point, you know, four, four point parts per million? Yeah. All that study that they did has later been proven fraudulent. They have it all on record. Or uh, off. Yeah, or so completely, the data was completely off. Like, the main, uh, the main study they did, which a guy, his last name was Dean, I don't remember his first name, they used that one to doctor. pinpoint it. Yeah, one doctor. That's the main thing the EPA used in, I think it was 39, was the big thing. They pushed it and pushed it and pushed it. And in 1950, he had to go before a grand jury and say that I lied, I actually used selective data, none of it's true. EPA didn't change anything for, I think it was until 98, they came out and said, <coughs> actually all the data that we use is fraudulent, but we're not going to change it for whatever reason. Well, because you have a huge lobby advocacy group exactly. on exactly. groups in dentists and pediatricians and uh, right. other right. health well, I mean, health if folks. you look, the main... And educators. You saw where they yeah. now are instituting it into the school system. Yeah, yeah. that's... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. But if, if you wish... You there know, is huge... There's huge lobby because... They Which get to they get huge what, for smoking too. Whatever they sell it to the uh, aluminum factories and the fertilizer factory factories and nuclear power plants to clean them, because it's KO88 is the compound. It's 20% sodium fluoride, or fluorosicilic acid, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, uh, acid. Those they get to purify, not purify it. They uh, filter it to where it's mostly sodium sodium fluoride or fluorosicilic acid. They then sell that at a 20,000% markup to what it's actually sold to in its regular form to produce KO88 to clean the fertilizer factories. So what they're selling it to municipal water sources to fluoridate, they make 20,000% more than they actually should. So there's huge money. Who does? The people that sell it. Either the, Who, even, even the, alumin the aluminum factories or the people that buy it from the aluminum factories to then turn it into sodium fluoride to sell to the municipalities. Pam, where do you get the fluoride? Uh, I want to say it's uh, hot, chem hot chemicals, but I'm not 100% sure that that's the But it's, I mean, it's chemical, periodically. Chemical, it's, chemical it's 91 percent of Americans, I think, was what the EPA said, okay, so use fluorosicilic acid. Some of the other 9% use like sodium fluoride, basically, or other different compounds that are roughly sodium fluoride. But 91% of it is sold as fluorosicilic acid at a 20,000% markup, roughly. That go, that fluctuates a little bit. But, but you're not against anybody making these No, 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 not at no, all. No, what no, I'm no, saying is fair market value. That's why there's a huge lobby for it, because they're making massive amounts of money off of sodium fluoride or fluorosicilic acid. So, yeah, there is a huge lobby for it, be, I think, well, that, because of that's that. that's one aspect of it. Yeah, but exactly. The health officials representing the children. Yeah, or 88. The, yeah. Uh, Which, 88. That, that, point, that point was brought up um, about the, uh, something about um, the what, mouthwash in the schools. The, yeah, they're in right yeah. institutions. Okay. Yeah. Mouthwash that, that, is all good and toothpaste is all good. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's the misconception because, you know, when you go to the, um, I remember one council member, I think it was uh, Ms. Blankenship, said she just had a fluoride treatment. Um, fluoride treatments, uh, when you brush your teeth or you use mouthwash, you don't actually consume the mouthwash. They, they t like if you're having a fluoride treatment, they, they use that thing to you suck it out of your mouth, or you you'll use the mouthwash, wash it around, and spit it out. In the fluoride, but if it's in your water, that. you're consuming it, and it, over systemic. time it builds up. Which that being the point, systemic fluoride ingestion, or you know, systemic is ingesting it. The CDC came right out and said that there's absolutely no value to ingest it. it it's absolutely no value being systemic. So when you drink it you get absolutely no benefit as you would from a topical treatment, which they said every, any proof that they had, which has later been found fraudulent, but even when they lied and said fluoride's good for you, they said that it has to be topical. It has to be put on your teeth in toothpaste, mouthwashes, fluoride paste treatments. So the whole systemic can, thing is completely... I don't know if anybody can answer this, but can uh, a, fluor a fluoride compound of whatever kind can it be taken out of a water supply through filter and filtration? Reverse osmosis. There's, there's, there's two different ways to take it out that are the most economical. 
It's through uh, non-activated alumina, which is an aluminum compound, which a whole bunch of private uh, companies sell that, and also for reverse osmosis. But the aluminum takes a second stage filter to take the aluminum out of it, like larger contaminant filters. And then, but that's a two-stage filter. Reverse osmosis takes it out first time. But reverse osmosis is a lot more expensive. But is there something you, like I have a, a refrigerator that has the filter system. Yeah, that's just large particle contaminants. That doesn't take out fluoride. You have to buy, for, I'm, I'm seriously considering purchasing, it's like a $200 filter system. It's two filter, it sits under your sink, you hook it right up to your water supply, and it goes through a two-stage filter. It ends up, if you do out the math, it's like two, three cents a gallon to do this small, just in your house. Whenever you get larger and larger, it gets down to one and a half cents, you know, 0.8 cents per, per gallon Once of water. Once it getting out of the system. Once it gets larger and larger, when it, you know, the larger the system, the more economical you're talking. So anywhere from like point, when you're talking about a whole house filter, because they make huge whole house filters, you're looking at like 0.8 cents per gallon to fluoridate or defluorinate your water inside your own house, all of it. But yeah, that's basically the two ways is the aluminum or non-activated alumina and reverse osmosis are basically no, the only... Th to go to the state just to ask them to stop feeding fluoride, not to well, do all we really want right? is to not, not to add, you know, these I think like, huge expensive... Yeah, yeah cause I think the, the, e the, the, the EPA has the, their own job to say what is acceptable to dump industrially, which they're already talking about. <clears throat> A couple years ago, they said you can't dump KO8 anymore when it's highly concentrated. You have to dilute it and dump it around because it's very dangerous. So they said, they even said sodium fluoride's bad if you drink it in high concentration. They said it right there. And uh, then what the companies have been doing, now the EPA is looking at making another uh, change in their code or whatever to make sure that companies can't dump KO88 because now they're just dumping it in huge volume. It's diluted, but now it's massive volume. So that's up to them, but all we want is just allow municipalities to opt in or out at any time they want for their municipalities fluoridation. Yeah, because I mean, the, the way that was it was written is like, you know, you had three years to opt in or out, and then it was like, too bad, so sad if studies come out 40 years from now yeah. about, you know, sense. oh, this could lead and to and cancer. And that's what or made it a volatile issue yeah, back exactly. in the late 60s, so I do remember that. Um, There's no... Um, so you're, you're, you're just starting with with one, I guess, jurisdiction at a time, and initial baby step would be to have this, and I don't think this is a baby step at all in terms of being able to yeah. accomplish it, but basically to give back to the cities or jurisdictions their right, their right to, to change, to, yeah. to change yeah. or choose or or implement if yeah. voters so. And so then let's see. say if that gets changed back to where the cities can opt in or out, you know, take take a citywide vote, you know, since it'd be the first one with like 40 or 50 years since, you know, whenever that would happen, that we've last voted on it. Um, since it's the public, in general, there's been more studies to come out to, uh, to prove that it causes problems over time. You'd have, you'd have more people educated than were back then, because back in the 60s, it was a way to help children's um, teeth from decaying. And that was like, well, if you drink it, your, your child's teeth will, you know, they'll, they'll be better taken care of if you can't afford dental work or toothpaste or something like that. So, I mean. Which today, it's really, I mean, it's still an issue, dental health, obviously, but as of 1940, when it became a really hot issue, dental care has become pretty much a non-issue, especially in America, in the United States of America. Specifically, what are you asking of this council? Uh, we'd like some sort of revolution, resolution, rev <laughs> oh, <laughs> revolution, yeah. resolution, <laughs> resolution. I'm not sure exactly what you guys could do, but some sort of resolution, basically saying to state, "Look, these guys have a point. This should seriously be looked at. We have their." You know, they're being backed by us. We see that this is a serious public health issue, and it needs to be at least looked at very carefully. And what will you do with that resolution? Hopefully, we can get enough publicity to go to state and basically ask them, 
look at least look at this really really seriously and we we're, we're talking to a couple uh, uh, scientists that have actually done the studies we're trying to get in contact with them to see if they'll actually testify for us you know against this but and basically not yet talk to any state representatives no not to say we have not reached the state level in any way I, I have I have sent out a letter to our representative Boehner about you know that's federal yeah well I, I, I know I'm just but just sent out a general letter to some like I, but I haven't had gotten any replies to some general people um, that represent us and uh, would be at the state level when we go there. No, 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 no. You don't want his banners at the Yeah. Well, I know. He's, just I, to get it he's, he's, out. He's at federal level. As much as possible. Like, just kind of like, yeah. Just but, disseminating information as much as possible, But we, we talked, and, you know, what we'd like, I guess, to answer your question, um, we would 